Hello, good morning. Hi, hello. Yeah, this is me, Peter Danielis from University of Rostock, Germany. I will present the work, but um, as I understood, we should wait some minutes for other people to join, right? Yeah, I think so. I think we should wait a few minutes. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know I have the whole time for the session for only my paper. So I thought we have to divide by three. So I prepared a short presentation, but I think that leaves more room for the discussion then. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So let's wait, I don't know, um, some minutes and then we can start. One or two minutes or what do you think? I think if the people go away from the unassigned room, then there's nine more. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I think you can start. So I can start, okay. <clears throat> so yeah, hello everyone again. Um, this is Peter from the University of Rostock, Germany. Um, I, yeah, usually use Zoom, so I hope I have shared my screen and you can see it, should, should be the case. Yes, we see, I, at least me. <laughs> <laughs> this is good, I hope the others as well. Um, yeah, so I understood that should be interactive, so feel free to interrupt me at any time. Um, I, I didn't prepare so many slides because I thought we have to divide the time by three, <laughs> uh, but now I understood the concept. <laughs> That's uh, I have been last time in Bremen, actually, when we had the present meeting, so uh, I, I, I noticed that you changed this uh, format in Hamburg. So I, I've seen. Yeah, the, okay, this, this is nice to be here again. So... Um, yeah, let me just take a spotlight. So, uh, yeah, this talk will be about the new time-sensitive networking standard, um, or at least parts of it, which has been have been implemented in Omnet++. Uh, uh, it's called Frame Replication and Elimination for Reliability. So it has to do something with reliable um, networking functionality, also referred to as FRER. Um, for, for real-time networks, for time-sensitive Ethernet networks. Um, yeah, the work is presented by me, but there are other people involved as well uh, in a project dealing with time-sensitive networks. Um, so the motivation for the work is that, um, yeah, some applications, as you know, require very reliable frame delivery. And um, yeah, in those many cases, uh, critical data must reach at the destination and must not be lost. And um, because we are talking about time sensitive networks, retransmissions would cause non acceptable delay in case a frame is lost and you would have to retransmit it. This would cause a non acceptable delay. So we try to send instead the frame several times, which is not a really new concept, but now there's a standard for it in time sensitive networks. So Let's talk, let's have a short look at the problem statement that was motivating us for doing this work. So we were uh, wondering how to ensure reliable communication in real-time Ethernet networks. So in time-sensitive Ethernet networks. So usually uh, in the standards, uh, TSN standards, we have a talker here, which sends data and the listener, which wants to receive the data. And then the network consists of some switches or Usually in the standard, they are referred to as bridges. So we use these, those terms exchangeably. So we have switch A, B, C, and D. And um, also we can have topologies here with interconnecting links. And um, let's look at the talker. So the talker actually wants to send a frame, but then it does something like it sends it twice on, on the two links it has here connected to switch A and B, uh, switch A and C, sorry. And it also tags a frame with an R tag, with a VLAN R tag, and also it gives a sequence number to those frames. So they, so, so this, for example, these duplicates would have the same sequence number, so, so it can be compared by the switches. Then again, switch C probably would uh, send duplicates to switch A and, and prepares something to send to switch D. 
and so does switch A, it prepares a frame to be sent to switch B and it sends a frame to switch C. Um, now switch A and C got duplicates, uh, but only forward one frame. So duplicates are sorted out. And then those frames take their way to the listener, which again, first frame that is received, it is like taken and the duplicate received, which is, you can see that it was a duplicate by looking at the sequence number is uh, eliminated. And then the listener only receives one of the duplicated frames. In this case, there was no error. So here we see that the duplicates are forwarded and sorted out by the respective switches or end stations. So what are the possible failures that can occur? Actually, um, well, you can have a packet loss, of course, kind of it can happen sometimes. So if the talker here, again, same topology, sends uh, two duplicated frames, and then we go on like in the procedure that I have described on the previous slide. Then, for example, here, this, this frame might, might be lost. So the listener only receives a frame from, from here but at least it receives it. So this, this year can be lost. What else can happen? Um, we can have a failing, failing link between switch A and B. Of course, same procedure. You, you know what will happen now. We see the same duplicated frames, but of course, as you see, only this route can deliver the frame because we have this link failure here. Yeah, and then finally what can happen is that we can have a failing bridge or switch. Uh, and yeah, same animation, you will see that, uh, yeah, switch A cannot really forward any frame due to the failing bridge. So we only see the frame traveling on that route. Okay, this was uh, what we had in mind. You saw the motivation for the work and also the some of the possible failures that can happen. And the standard is supposed to protect against those errors in a way. Um, so this is what the standard does actually, but um, the standard is only supposed as all the TSN standards, the transitive networks thing standard, they are supposed to deliver the mechanisms that you can use, but um, actually the standard leaves some questions open, which is good for us as researchers because we can answer them then. And for example, the, uh, the FRER standard, which the talk is about, uh, for example, doesn't tell you which traffic to replicate. It doesn't say how many times to replicate it. And it also does not really tell what to do in the case of a permanent error. So this kind of mechanisms in this small work that I present, we have had a look at in a way. So first question that occurs is which traffic to replicate. Um, actually, we have had a look at um, some um, an IEEE standard which talks about priorities for, for traffic. And there we have priorities reaching from zero to seven with seven as you can consider that as the highest priority, the most critical traffic. And um, yeah, then we, we thought, okay, this is of course up to the application requirements as throughout our whole work, this is really change exchangeable. So we thought, yeah, let's look at the traffic starting from priority four, which is a video traffic, which has some latency requirements here, also some jitter requirements, and then the internet work traffic and network control traffic, which you might find in a smart factory where you have some data coming from a sensor, which is um, used to, to a control and actuator and has to be delivered in time. So can be, for example, if you connect a uh, um, kind of uh, control in a satellite, where you measure things from a sensor and then you have to uh, control the, the thrusters and so on. So that can very well be a, a network traffic with very high requirements. Okay, but anyway, we thought, uh, let's take an example. It's really just an example. And let's start at priority four. And there we say, we wanna have a reliability from the listener, from the talker to the listener of let's say 99%. And then for, the increasing priorities, we also increase the re reliability requirement uh, to 99.9 .9 and so on, which in a way just says, um, if we wanna, we, if we have frames with that priority sent, then 
we would like to basically take not only one route from sender to receiver, but let's say, depending on some calculations, which we are still it's still under consideration and it's ongoing work, we increase the number of parallel routes on which the frameworks are sent so that we can, in a way, ensure this reliability better. So, but this is, in a way, the idea of which traffic we replicate. So we wouldn't actually replicate traffic which comes with a priority of zero to three, then we will only use that one route. But if frames come with a higher priority, we will probably probably look at the reliability. And then, for example, we will uh, calculate, depending on the topology and the application requirement, we will try to find not only one route from this talker to listener, but two or three, which makes it more probable that a frame arrives from the sender to the receiver. So this is kind of some simple approach that we followed. Then how many times to duplicate the traffic? As I said, <clears throat> let's say we establish always one route from talker to listener. Then if the frame priority is greater than three, as I told you, we look at, uh, at our table if the required reliability is met that we want to achieve kind of um, this 99 or 99.9%. Uh, right now we do that offline. And if, if the reliability is not met, we establish an additional route from talker to listener. And then we check again. And so we look at the priority and, and, and also on, on, on the reliability we want to achieve. And then we establish one or more routes. And once the required reliability is met, we say, um, okay, then send the frames, the duplicated frames on the established routes. Um, so that is in a way here, this reliability value in a way gives an indication of uh, of the number of routes from sender to receiver that are needed. Um, then also we had a short look at how to deal with permanent errors. I mean, a frame can always be lost and it will be countered by uh, this uh, several number of routes. So if you lose one, fr one frame, like once in some hours, uh, that there's no problem because you sent duplicates on several routes. So if you look at this uh, topology um, again, um, here you see two routes established on which actually two duplicated frames can 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 be sent. But then now let's let's assume that this link is permanently broken. So what happens? For example, we 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 what we assume. I have to say that was also a comment of the reviewers, which was a really good one. Um, we assume that we have a global um, um, instance here, like kind of a let it be and controller, which is also um, like uh, considered in the TSN standards, it can be kind of a software-defined network and controller, which has overview of, about the network. And it knows the topology, and it can also request information from the switches. And this uh, global instance can, for example, increase a counter. If, if, if for example, three times here, um, the switch has been sent and not, it has not been received by the listener, and then it will be, and then this will be considered a permanent error. And what happens then? We uh, simply say after, for example, sometimes here, uh, we notice that the frame is not delivered on this additional route. We assume it to be a permanent error and we establish a, actually an additional route here, just to counter the error. So this is in the idea here in this kind of assuming a global controller, um, which has the overview of the whole network and is able to react to errors. This is also another TSN standard that, uh, that tells um, us how to do, how to set up such a network and how to reconfigure things, then we simply establish a new route, which can be pre-configured in a way or, or like um, also at um, design time. So once this uh, error happens, we have something like that, a new route already uh, prepared. Okay, so this is um, just to give you an idea about um, this FRER standard, also referred to as I, um, 802.1 CB, which is a, a, a TSN standard. Uh, so we implemented this standard uh, partially, and also then we integrated these three simple um, measures as a supplement to the standard, just to check, um, just to make it work and see if it works as, expect, as expected. So this is why I'm here. Um, so I just want to shortly introduce um, um, the implementation, um, just shortly that you know, uh, this can be an example topology. So here we have a talker uh, denoted as workstation and here we have a listener denoted as backup server. And then we have a lot of switches here. 
So here we have like a four parallel path from which you can select and establish routes between talker and listener. And we actually, um, yeah, we use the so-called nesting framework, which is a framework that has been implemented by the University of Stuttgart. Um, yeah, um, David Hellmanns and so on. Maybe you know them. We are working together with them. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, we took the nesting framework um, actually, um, and we integrated this functionality into the talker and the bridges um, on top of what they have implemented. So we did some modifications there. Um, okay. Yes. Um, so that's that's how what we did. So we integrated some modules here, and um, just to be short, um, I want to show you what we have achieved. Um, so we have actually implemented seven test cases. And um, as a proof of concept, we have simulated cases without errors with a transient error. That means like the frame just is dropped every now and then, but not forever. And also we looked at uh, the case where we have a permanent error as described, where really a root uh, breaks in a way forever. And we used uh, three to different topologies. So everything that you see here is really application dependent. It really is depends a little bit on the topology um, and on the application requirements. So this is really just a test now, which is very, very application specific and also depending on the topology. So we are still investigating this uh, more, um, but just we want to show you that um, we have implemented it and what the, the results are and if they are as expected. So we have a topology with this, which you saw on the previous slide with four parallel routes here with like this. Then we have a topology with interconnecting links between four parallel paths, for example, here. So we have dependent paths here. Those paths are completely independent. But so at least in this part, in this part, but then for example, here, this link is shared by the first and the second pass. This is which makes a difference. And then in the last topology, we have different numbers of bridges on four parallel paths, which in a way influences also, of course, the latency from the talker to the listener, which, so it makes a difference whether you send a frame here or here. Um, so let's have a look at shortly at the seven test cases that we have uh, simulated. So first we look at this topology and in the small picture of the topology, I have highlighted the path that is used for sending the frame in yellow. So for example, here you see that you send on a path with one, two, three, four, five switches. And the frames are sent with priority three. And as I have told you, this is the, a case for us where we say that we do not need any redundant route. So actually we always send messages, for example, 10 messages, at some point in time, and it is received somewhere. And the difference is what we call the packet delay. And here you see no error, one route. So the packet actually uh, has a delay of some microseconds. There's no variation here because we don't have any error. So it works as expected. Just as was our preliminary uh, idea. Now we increase the priority to four and five. Um, and, and then uh, we said, okay, depending on some simple calculations, we increase the parse number to two. Now the, oh, sorry, uh, the, the frames are sent in parallel on these two paths. Um, this has one, two, three, four, five switches. This is one, two, three, four, five switches. So it doesn't make a difference. Um, actually one frame will, because there's no error, it will arrive here. It applicates are sorted out. So the packet delay does not vary compared to the previous slide, but it's sent on two paths. Now we increase the priority to six and seven. And for that, we say we to achieve our re desired reliability, we need three paths. Or let's say we, oh, that was my mouse. Sorry, back to the slide. <laughs> Sometimes it scrolls without uh, asking me. Um, so we have, we have established three routes selected from the four paths that are available. And because there's no error, again, same packet delay, duplicates received are sorted out. 
Now we have um, another topology where we have actually uh, priority five. So we need to uh, air a route selected from the available pass. And we have one, one pass here with one, two, three, four, five switches and one with one, two, three, four, five switches again. So um, no, no errors, so it's still working as expected and duplicates will probably be sorted out here. Um, then we have uh, the same, might be a little bit boring, but just the proof of concept. Uh, we have the next topology here where we have priority five. Uh, so we establish two routes from the selected path. And now we have another topology. Here's a path with one, two, three, four switches and a topology with, uh, with a path with one, two, three, four, five switches. And since uh, let's say duplicates are sent here and here, the, the frame that was sent over this route arrives earlier. So we have a reduced packet delay compared to the other slides of 35 microseconds. So let's say the, the frame that's sent on that route arrives later and is sorted out here as a duplicate. But but you see the influence of the number of switches as of course you, you would have expected that and it, our simulation model works as, as expected. Now, now we have uh, the more interesting test case. So we, again, we have the same topology and we have established the same route. This route in a way, in a terms of number of switches, it is shorter than that one. And um, every third frame is dropped on that route. And you see that leads to the fact that the packet delay increases. Why? Because on that route, the frame is dropped and the duplicate is still sent over that path, but it's longer. So you see this increase in the packet delay. So this is um, actually, that was to be expected, but it's still a transient error because in a way the, the link or whatever causes the error to occur, it recovers, might be radiation or whatever you can assume. Now uh, we have a permanent error. Um, so you see here that we have again our topology with priority five frames sent and these two routes. And after the fifth frame, this route permanently fails, which of course, as, assume, as you can assume, which leads to the fact that the frames are only sent over that longer route. And starting at message six, we have that longer packet delay. So what do we do now? Actually, we have a global instance in, in place, um, which then uh, let's say, after three times the frame has not been received on that route, this route is assumed to be permanently broken, which leads to the fact simply that we can consider that route as failed. And then we switch to that, um, we switch to that route, um, which is actually longer than the, this one. So this will now be the, new minimum delay and if this route should fail as well we will even uh, get a longer delay but at least the frame will be delivered to the receiver because we noticed that there is a permanent error so these were our supplements to the standard just shortly summarized it works as expected and um, in our ongoing work we are considering more complex uh, calculations for varying um, packet error rates, varying, uh, varying uh, link error rates. So now we just took, a, yeah, we took a, a fixed error rate and did some simple calculations and uh, they not did really just approximate or roughly approximate like in a way how many routes you need for a desired reliability, but actually the calculations for determining the number of routes that you need in parallel if you have some com com some complex topology and really some uh, interconnecting links here, these calculations are not really easy. Um, so we are now uh, working on that part so we can, in a way, um, give a better indication of how many routes to select or, or how, how many parallel routes to establish for a given topology and some packet error rates uh, that you have measured. And um, then we can give you a a better approximation of how many routes you probably should establish just to avoid errors here. Okay. Yeah, I hope I could uh, deliver the main idea to you. And um, the, the good thing is that the simulation model works worked. This was actually the uh, 
major effort that we had in our team. Um, so this um, simulation model was developed for uh, for the standard that I told you about, the IEEE ICAM.2.1 CB standard, um, which is the FRER standard, which um, tries to achieve reliability and time sensitive networks. And uh, we integrated some uh, simple supplements that we thought could be useful to the standard. And we tried to address the questions, which frames should be duplicated, how many times a frame should be duplicated for a given or for desired reliability to achieve and what ha what happens in case that the pass or route permanently fails. And we tested different topologies under different conditions. And uh, I have tried to show you uh, an overview of that. And the simulation results show that the model actually works as expected um, and protects against transient and permanent errors. So in the future, we would uh, work on the configuration of the model at runtime. Uh, actually, we aim at uh, Introducing now um, a SDN controller into uh, the uh, on that model. We are working on that, which is able to communicate um, with, over something like SNMP with all the uh, endpoints and the switches, and then is able to collect the requirements from the endpoints, calculate what they need, which routes, which schedules, and then sends the routes to the switches also at runtime, so for reconfiguration, and then tells them, for example, different routing rules, different schedules. So this is something that we are working on, and the controller can then also be used to establish new routes and also to calculate feasible routes. Also, of course, we I showed you now uh, we take route two and four, but of course we have to determine which routes to select, and also this can be done by uh, the controller in a way. Yeah, and also we're working on the theory here, on the theory about um, um, how many routes we also need in which cases. Yeah, so. Yeah, that, that would be everything from, from my side. So we're actually working again on several standards and, and of time sensitive networking. Also, we have implemented a previous model on GPTP um, recently. Um, so we're still trying to do that. We have also worked on a model about um, asynchronous traffic shaping, which I could not present at the summit here. Um, so yeah, this is a short overview of, of our work. So I want to thank you for your attention and. Of course, uh, I'm ready for questions and maybe I can answer them. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank yeah, you sorry. very much for, for your presentation. Uh, uh, I, I do have a number of questions. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. The reason for that basically is that, uh, as you will see tomorrow, I will have another presentation, which is quite related to your work because it's about TSN supporting the TSM features in INET. And there's uh, one aspect of this uh, regarding that is uh, about the uh, frame replication and uh, this redundancy stuff there. So there is some overlap here, but uh, there's also many differences. So I, I do have a lot of, uh, quite a few questions. <laughs> so okay. if anybody else has questions, just interrupt me. <laughs> so my first question is that, did I get this right? That currently you have a static stream configuration but you are going to you are aiming for a dynamic configuration so I, you will be able to reconfigure the streams while the simulation is running in the future yeah. not right now not we are working on that actually we have taken the nesting framework where mm -hmm. you uh, like i think on um, i'm i have to admit we are uh, we are a team and i'm um, i'm coordinating the work so i'm not really uh, mm -hmm. always um, implementing it by myself but um, I know that you, I think you read them that XML file from some files with the routing and scheduling rules. Mm -hmm. And so we just have a look at our topology. We pre-compute the routes and then we modify these uh, configuration files. And then once you start the simulation, the rules are already in place and then the simulation can be started. So there's no dynamic reconfiguration right wow. now. And that's uh, that's what the review also asked me in the review. Uh, how, how all this works and who's doing the configuration. So we are aiming at implementing the, um, what's it called? I always forget the standard, this configuration standard of TSN where the uh, controller know, is in place. Yeah, yeah. So that, um, that was the central component that you mentioned that it's going to configure. Yeah, this, actually we uh, want to implement the CUC and CNC functionality. Um, and we're working on that where you have uh, the um, NetConf uh, protocol spoken between the CNC and the switches. Mm -hmm. And then the young um, models for for configuring the switches. So this is something we yeah because like to the, the INET version will not have this this one. It, it only has static stream configuration. We are not going to 
to do the dynamic protocol stuff. Then ah, there's my is... other question would be about multicast. Do you support multicast streams or just telecast streams? Um, because uh, read and see and multicast is a kind of difficult <laughs> thing to do, but uh, it's actually possible. Just uh... Uh, well, I I I think multicast. Well, how do you mean it? I mean. We are, we are we're supporting right now um, at the point where we send it and in switches, we are supporting this kind of frame duplication. Based say, on say, this. say you have a one talker, let's say, and then you have like, I don't know, it's a, let's say you have a complicated topology and you have like five listener and you have one ah. Matica streams from one talker to five listeners and you want to make this Matica stream redundant so that it, uh, it arrives at all the listeners with some See. probability or some, so it's way, it's a, it's it's kind of similar, but it's uh, more complicated because then you have to take into <laughs> account the multicast nature of the stream. Because uh, if you just assume that the stream is like five separate unicast streams and you duplicate those streams individually, then you will end up with a completely different solution than if you do this as, as a multicast stream. That's a very good question. Uh, we didn't consider that. I have not really thought about uh, actually we are what we are doing is um, all the inspiration for our work comes from our um, dfk project dfg project uh, um, where we do um, implement schedules um, in our scheduling we actually support for um but by schedules do you mean the time ever shaping or um the schedules uh, so let's say we have a topology we have some requirements on the end-to-end -end latency and then we have a topology and we do some uh calculations using integer linear programming um yeah, to yeah sure compute so basically the, the timer shaping yeah the, the, yeah 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 exactly when yeah in, in at which a switch which frame should start yeah. at what yes. point of time and then it should arrive in yeah so I, and I'm, there there we consider um uh, multicast streams scheduling but but actually to, to back to your question not not in not in conjunction with this standard that is really an, a very interesting task that you mentioned so no we don't mm -hmm. do, support it but it's a very interesting topic actually uh, because i have some uh, I, I, at least uh, in, in the inet version where we have the static configuration multicast redundant streams are supported but it's ah. it's it's just static so uh, basically you have to uh, figure out before the simulation starts in during the initialization and, and everything has to be configured so so that it works uh, then this other question is uh, interest that interests me is when you say you merge the streams by uh, dropping the duplicate frames. Uh, how do you actually do that? I mean, um, because um, so depending on the top topology and the and, and the uh, different passes that frames can take from the talker to the listener, it might happen that you get out of order frames or. You got to duplicate completely out of order. How? I mean, what what is the exact? Or can you just say something about the mechanism? How you remove the duplicates? Well, um, these uh, scenarios that I have shown you are not really complex in our case. So I think it's implemented in a way where um, you send, as you you saw, you you send duplicates on these different ways, and some arrive later maybe, um, and then the others, and there's simply the the switch keeps uh, track of. The, the sequence number that it already has received, and then if you, if another frame arrives, it just uh, so basically the last sequ sequence number or or, or or some number of sequence numbers it has seen or yeah well um, I think um, it it uh, kind of stores maybe a combination of of sequence numbers and uh, maybe I don't know some addresses fields um, uh, right now our our topologies uh, our suppliers are not really diverse so I don't. I don't really know how it's implemented, but I see your point. If, if there's a lot of mixed traffic here, and and, and apologies, I think we have not really implemented a very intelligent thing here. But so I know one, one one pass could take one hope, and the other pass could take like ten hops. And yes. the first frame in the one hope pass just uh, drops, and yeah. all the rest, then then the next ten frames go through the one hope pass. Then the ten hope pass, and the first frame at the ten hope pass can arrive completely out of order and if you can detect detect it it's not necessarily a problem because it's allowed in the l2 in the layer two it's allowed to pass up out of order frames i'm just asking <laughs> I mean, yeah yeah because yeah, in yeah. that what, what we what i did basically was just uh drop the frames i mean just remember the, the a certain number of uh, sequence numbers per stream per node yeah. and 
uh, like you can configure the number of remember sequence numbers and then then, then those frames are removed. But yeah, probably it doesn't guarantee. It helps just to jump in. I mean, I've implemented something similar, um, which I'll present later. But I just I just had a a simple packet queue where yeah. I, uh, I recorded the destination and the sequence number, and yes. just checked um, very similar to I think what you said you were just implementing. Yeah, well, this is what we did. Uh, it's the same, but we didn't really deal with a uh, lot of issues that you mentioned. But yeah, I see you're working on the same topic, so that would be interesting to have a look at. So it's integrated in INET already in the new uh, INET version. It's in a, in a development branch. So I'm, I, actually, I'm going to give a talk in, tomorrow about this topic. But there oh, are great. a lot of other topics regarding TSM. So it's not just frame redundancy; it's also time synchronization and. Yeah. shaping and stream filtering and cut through switching and all, all, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I, 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 I actually I had some discussion with you in the in the TSN chat. Yeah. I remember about our GPTP project, uh, which was implemented by my former colleague Henning Putnis. Um, he, I'm not sure if we actually integrated this project. In, in no, China, I, because uh, we have a GPTP now in INET, but I, it wasn't implemented by us. Uh, it was an external project. Is it your project? I'm not sure. I, yeah, it, it wasn't was, integrated by me, so I, I don't. don't no, I, I don't know what what we finally decided. If you wanted to integrate it, I also talked to David Hellmans. Uh, he also, he pointed me to that because we got a request. Um, actually, because my my colleague left the university, as you know, ah, okay. you regularly it happens. happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it happens all the time. So I I don't know what then was the outcome of that. Just ah. I was involved in the chat and uh, but I didn't look regularly, so I don't know if you integrated that or took another one. But I saw that it has been integrated. Yeah, yeah. something. And yeah. Um, do we still have some time? Well, I have to go, go to some exam in, in, in a half an hour, but I have some, okay. some time. Yeah, if anybody has ha, else have a question, just <laughs> interrupt me because I have <laughs> infinite I, I, did have, I did have one question. Okay. Uh, if, if you can just go back like, I don't know, five or six slides to one of the networks where you drop every third frame. That one, yeah. Um, what, so currently the only way you're duplicating is by sending it over a different path. Mm -hmm. Truly in this case, you would get the same packet delay if you just duplicated it and sent it down the same path, if you're just dropping every third frame. Have you looked at scenarios like that where instead of duplicating it over a separate path, you duplicate down one path twice and then maybe you duplicate again or something? Uh, no, not really, but um, this is a good point. Yeah, yeah, uh, we haven't looked at that. I just thought that'd be an, like an interesting thing to, to look at yeah. like, what if you're duplicating and sending it down the same route because actually if, you, if, it's, if you're just dropping, I don't know, one in a hundred frames, that would be equally valid. I think, uh, thank you for the inspiration. Um, I got a lot of inspiration uh, already now by you. So thank you for that. Yeah, I think we can look into very many different directions because yeah. the standard leaves so many things unaddressed. Yeah, that's a good idea, but we didn't look at that. But okay. thank you. No, that'd be interesting to see. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you for presenting it. But I think that's, I've only got one question. So fire away with your remaining questions. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, do you have uh, any any um, anything that you can show us re uh, regarding the internal architecture of how the network nodes work internally with respect to the frame replication? I'm just interested in what kind of modules are there and what what they are doing. And because uh, of what we see here is just network nodes, but I'm interested in the of Yeah, yeah. Of course, uh, of course. It does. I it can. Does not a secret. <laughs> I don't know if I have it here. Let's see. I am just looking. Yeah, okay. So I, if, if you have it, let's. Um, I think, um, so for example, uh, the, uh, the, the things, the frame modifications that you need to be able to look at um, <clears throat> The RTAC and the, the, the sequence number generation, I think we have integrated in the traffic gen schedule app from nesting. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I think, let's have a look. Uh, what we did in the bridge was uh, we took uh, so numerous functions like uh, were already present in the nesting model. So um, this is uh, on the right hand side, this basically looks like in the 
um, nesting model, but uh, blocked application. I think this was mm -hmm. where we did uh, the um, this we extended to um, understand the um, the standard specific information so that the bridge can decide how to handle the uh, the the frames uh, according to that functionality. So I think this one was uh, what we modified here, and also um, I think it, it more or less it dealt with the with the elimination, but but I would have to look into mm -hmm. our work again. Oh, it's okay. And, and the frame forward, does it, is this the... This was remember. already a nesting. Uh-huh, I don't know what, what is. So, yeah, actually I didn't implement it by myself. I If you're more interested, uh, we can also take that offline and I could really look into the source code. But right now I can only tell you that basically we did do the sequence number generation here, and this was our point where we so decided. The, biggest, the reason for me asking this question is that uh, when, uh, so when I was uh, working on the INET uh, in, um, DSN architecture, so I had to come up with some uh, architecture which supports DSN, but not only DSN, because you would have to be able to uh, use the TSN features while you also use standard Ethernet features, like you can have a VLAN, it's just a standard Ethernet VLAN, which doesn't use any TSN features and on mm -hmm. the same network and same topology, while there are still uh, addition, while there are, there are additional redundant streams and, and so on. And, and, and once you have a redundant stream, you, you also use the VLAN IDs and the and because you have to encode the, the streams into, into VLAN IDs according to standard. And it's kind of... <laughs> It's kind of weird because you already have, yeah. or you're using the VLAN IDs for something else, and it's uh, you have they have to live next to each other in the same topology, so you have to distinguish which frame is supposed to, as you mentioned, is supposed to be replicated and which should not be replicated. And how do you handle this with with the with the same architecture? And that's a big question for me it is. because I ha I have come up with some kind of solution which I think is quite general, but I'm not sure if it's the right solution. So we can talk about if if you want to wait later when I when I present my because you will see the architecture there. So yeah. So um, the the issue that you uh, addressed is of course um, we are also aware of that. Um, I can tell you a little bit about the things we are doing. So actually, um, as you can assume, we have a lot of um, students working on the project, and for ex right now the student works are unfortunately. Um, always uh, isolated from each other in a way. Uh -huh, it's um, so, to organize them too. <laughs> yeah, so now I have um, 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 yeah, someone, a student assistant that, that uh, looks into the whole new Omnet version, INET version and nesting. I don't actually know, uh, I don't know which version of nesting is out there now and which, uh, with which uh, INET version it's compatible. So um, he, he now looks at all those issues Mm -hmm. And it also tries to integrate the, the isolated modules that we have implemented. So uh, then uh, we will address the same issues just just for, for the sake of that someone has an overview like you about it. So uh, right now, this is simply the projects are in a way only tested for, for, for example, for this standard and then not really mm -hmm. with, with other traffic and so on. So we didn't really address those topics just simply because of the fact that the student only works on one isolated topic and the next one works on an isolated topic. Um, but mm -hmm. but if you're interested, we, we are really interested in continuing the work here. And um, my particular interest is in the is in Omnet since many years. So we can really keep in touch and um, um, yeah, have yeah, a look sure. at that to, together. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Because there are there is some. Uh overlap but there's also many different parts i mean it's, we are not going to implement all tsm features in in inet but uh, some features which are required uh, which are needed by industry uh, partners so so to speak uh we will have to but uh i don't know that so and that there is some overlap but there's there's many things to which are not I mean, mm -hmm. that different and it's, it's okay because different requirements. And I see that there's a filtering database that's just understanding, but we don't have it, for example, in mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, most of the things we took from nesting. So I don't know what the current state of nesting is. Um, it has been used with an older version of INET, the mm -hmm. one version that I use. So I don't know, I have Me neither. not asked, I have not talked to, da to David if he has uh, updated the nesting to the newer version. I will talk to him later, maybe. I think he also, yeah. 
And the investing um, with respect to redundancy, you mentioned that you actually also uh, do the scheduling uh, by which I mean the gate control list. So the timing of the gates, I mean, the, the timing um, of the... Well, we do, uh, we do this following. We are, um, we are taking this topology and we take uh, the, this, um, we take the flow uh, flow descriptions um, of the flows that this are in the, the network. XML file you mentioned. Um, no, 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 this is what uh, Omnet needs as an input. We are doing it right now separate from, from Omnet. We take adjacent files and other files and feeding them into an uh, integer linear programming solver. And then okay. the output is a feasible schedule and routes. Mm -hmm. And, um, and um, the, the not... solver is, is your own implementation or is yes. it some external? Ah, okay. Yes. And, and, and I know that nesting is able to, uh, if you convert the output of the solver, let's say into a feasible format, that uh, nesting is able to read in the schedules computed mm -hmm. and also the topology. And then it creates from that files, the right topology and it tests the schedules if they are feasible ah. at, at ah. all. Uh, but I didn't work, uh, I didn't work on on, on that, uh, in a way, I just wanted to integrate first this uh, CUC and CNC components, which actually are later on the ones that will will probably execute the ILP solver in a way and compute all the configuration rules. And then the rules would have to be translated into the right format so that they can be sent to a switch and it understands it. Um, so this is what we want to do in Omnet later on mm -hmm. to, to, to use also the PGAP uh, there's this PCAP implementation where you can con compute from, from the traffic in network PCAPs, PCAP uh, files, um, because we want to compare the results from on that to a real test bed. So this is what we have in mind. Ah, uh, so you want to reverse engineer the timings from the PCAP files? Did I get it right? Uh, well, we, will see, we would like to see if our schedules computed, if you feed them into, let's say, uh, Omnet into nesting, and uh, if, if the schedules work expected on the topologies, and then we call the traffic, as, as, uh, which you uh, would do in, in a real network with Wireshark. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also record the traffic in our test bed. And then we compare simulation uh, PCAPs with the uh, real PCAPs and see if the traffic matches or if ah. there are differences, just ah. to see uh, how close the simulation model comes to the yeah, yeah, real that test sense. bed. Yeah. yeah, that's. That's the uh, future. Yeah. yeah, because we and then see and the, the the gate scheduling, the time, the scheduling is uh, well, they are not independent. So if you have redundant stream, then you have to schedule the gates redundantly because yeah, this is we have that on the agenda. And so actually, the question that we always discuss is. Uh, um, also with uh, vendors of, of TSN switches. Uh, uh -huh. uh, how, how do these uh, different standards uh, interfere in a way? Or how, how, yeah, how, 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 do they, they, how do they actually implement it in the real hardware? Because yeah, that's, yeah. that's the big question. I mean, do they do that in hardware or, or is it some software component which is maybe too slow or, or whatever? So this yeah, is really yeah. the question. Um, yeah. We'll be working on, on, on the simulation side, as you see, and on, also on the, on the uh, test bed. So let's see what, what we will be able to achieve. Mm -hmm. OK, thank, thanks for the answers, I, I think. <laughs> A quick question. Do we have any commercial product that uses this protocol, this 802.1CB? Yes, I think so. I think um, some companies uh, support it. I don't know if I. I'm allowed to mention the companies if that is merchandising. I don't know. <laughs> should, am I, should I mention them? No, I, I don't know. You can, I think. So those are switches? Those are switches, real switches which you can buy and they support kind of uh, a time aware shaper. They support, I think, seamless redundancy. They support credit based shaping, um, not asynchronous traffic shaping. And of course, they support um, frame preemption. Um, so I think these are the big vendors, um, kind of um, Contour and T-Tech. TT tech. Hmm. That, that, Is that tech. actually used in, in vehicle networks or, or industry? Uh, I think uh, the, the, the use case is different. Uh, I don't know if, uh, if they use it for, what did you say, in vehicular vehicle? In vehicle, vehicle. Yes, in vehicle. I think so. Yeah. Um, and um, also for, I don't know if they also do that for smart factory. Um, yeah. uh, that's the use cases I know. No, uh, maybe I, I, 
I didn't mention maybe some other vendors that I'm very sorry for that, but those uh, um, I, know, I know I'm aware of. Uh, and I think they some do the IP course for FPGAs. Um, others do uh, circuits, ASIC circuits, I, I don't know, some software components, but you can find some. I know also, um, I think InnoRoute is also a company that uh, sells trust notes uh, for Munich. So there are some some companies that uh, sell uh, TSN switches. There's also NXP. NXP, sorry, of course, NXP, I forgot, yeah, yes. So that if that answers your question? Yeah, sure, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I hope I will be able to join the sessions. Uh, I have, unfortunately, this week, a uh, lot of exams. So I, I, I will see when I can join. Um, I have to see um, if maybe some other people can take over my exams. But um, unfortunately, I have to be in most of, we have this long exams consisting of four parts, taking one hour each <laughs> now. Um, I, I, I will try my best, we'll see. But at least this session was able I think everything will be, will be recorded. This okay. is just recorded, so the videos will be available. But of course, chatting discussing is always, will be discussing better. Discussing is always <laughs> yeah. kind of better because it's interactive. Yeah. Yeah. So I I, re I read that I it should should I should say if uh, if there are other questions, please ask. Yeah. Um, hi, just maybe one quick one. Uh, you, you, you mentioned at some point, uh, sorry, let me just uh, make it this more interactive. Uh, <laughs> hi. So you, you, you mentioned uh, at some point that you implemented uh, uh, the, the CB standard only partially. Are there things missing or did I misunderstood this? You, um, you, you said that the standard has been implemented, you implemented it partially. So I was wondering if there are any aspects of it that, that are missing and which ones are. Well, um, um, uh, for example, I think the most building blocks uh, were implemented. Um, I'm not sure about all the stuff related to the configuration. So for example, uh, the, file, the file format that you are supposed to use once you configure a switch is for sure not the one that you will find in reality right now. Ah, okay. um, so we seem, let's say from the point of view of uh, which uh, it also relates to, for example, how you how we keep track of the sequence number to, of the frames to be sorted out, to be eliminated. And all our uh, data structures that we used are simply the, the easiest ones that we had in mind when starting to implement it. Uh, but I think the core functionality of uh, this kind of, um, yeah, frame duplication and elimination is there. But I'm sure that uh, if you look into the details of the things, how to keep track of it, how to store it, how to call the modules and so on, we are not really standard compliant yet. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, uh, it's, it's uh, no, I, I was mostly wondering func like operational wise, if, if all the main functions of, of the, the standard are there, clearly the technical implementation that that might be different, of course. Yeah, right. uh, yeah. also, also, um, I have to also tell, tell you that, that it was also a, a student uh, project, a student uh, master's thesis um, who, who did, uh, so the student dealt with the implementation. So um, um, it is in a way a straightforward implementation. So I can right now without uh, looking at the source code and maybe updating some things here and there, cannot really tell you if this really um, too much standard compliance. So that's what I meant mm -hmm. partially because I don't want to promise yeah. here that we have a fully working uh, prototype that you can take and integrate. So um, that's that's what I wanted to highlight. So it's um, part of a student work. So <clears throat> we were still working on it. Yeah. I understand. Okay, thank Good. you. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, so um, can I ask a question? Yes, yes. Of course. So to, towards, um, sorry, I, I kind of joined late because of the time difference from where I am. Oh, but, okay. But um, I, I, towards the end of your conver of your presentation, you talked about uh, SDN, software defined. Um, what, what exactly was it uh, like going to improve in the 
in the TSN. Um, I, I didn't quite get that. Yes, yes, thank you for the question. I um, always uh, tend to call a controller, uh, which has, oh, yeah. for example, the overview about a network like here. Mm -hmm. So you see, you only have the switches and the uh, end nodes, and yes. we are assuming that they are um, configured at design time and you start the simulation and the rules are installed in the switches and they behave as they should. Um, but of course, uh, the standard also tells you that we have actually the standard tells you in the centralized version, you need a configuration framework around the whole network. And this consists of actually two controllers, the central user controller and the central network controller. So you have actually two controllers which collect the requirements from the endpoints and translated to rules to be then sent to the switches by those controllers, which I have omitted in this picture. And those controllers, I tend to call them software defined networking controllers, since in a way they um, have uh, the con they are implementing the control plane in a way, and uh, they are computing the rules to be installed on the switches. So that's what why I talked about software defined uh, networking uh, SDN controllers here, because they are in a way implementing kind of a stand paradigm. So that's what you probably heard. Did that answer your question? Yes, yes, yeah, that's, uh, I got it, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's clear. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have any more questions? I am very, very sorry. To, to tell you I have to leave for the exam in some minutes. Uh, uh, yeah. Do you have any questions? Or, I mean, you can this in, in uh, nine minutes anyway. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we can chat um, later or you can always contact me. Um, I will be in my home office. <laughs> <laughs> There will be a panel discussion also in, on Friday about the TSN. Uh, when will it be? Uh, my presentation will be tomorrow in morning, 10.30. But the panel discussion will be on Friday, uh, a little bit after 11 o'clock in, in, in the morning. OK. Um, I, I can have a look at my schedule. I, I, um, I'm not really sure if I can join it. so. I mean, I have my talk tomorrow at 11 that I can join for sure. On Friday, I can't promise you, depending on my schedule. I am very sorry for that. Okay. But this week is it's, it's packed. I, I cannot do anything. I cannot find any colleague to do the exams for me. So I will. I hope um, I will try. Yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I saw that uh, the talk will be again tomorrow at 11.15. Uh, I saw that. So we'll, we will keep, uh, give the presentations twice, right? Everyone. Uh, uh, sorry? I think everyone gives the presentation twice, right? No, I, I'll only give this once. Oh, you give that once. Okay, yeah. Yes. But but this sessions will be twice, right? I saw. At yes, least I will I give this. So. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So. I just checked my schedule, so tomorrow I will. And you are supposed to do this at tomorrow at eleven. Yeah. 15. Yes. Yes. Okay. My presentation is more about uh, some live demonstrations instead of uh, too many slides. <laughs> Actually, have like five slides or something. Okay. Yeah, I tried. I know usually I have a lot more slides, but I tried to reduce it because I was aiming for like I didn't uh, know. I checked uh, and I thought, okay, fifteen minutes, not more. I thought the 50, 45 minutes will be divided by three. But I think it was okay still for okay. this session. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Are there more uh, people that would like to ask something? I don't see anyone who's unmuting him or herself. Okay, any questions left? I saw some uh, notification that soon we will go back to yes. the main session. 
Yeah, so I don't know. Um, should we stay here some more minutes or should we <clears throat> end the discussion? Do you have any opinion about it? Oh, we can go back if, if there's okay. no more questions. I can stop recording. I was recording okay. this. Uh, so yeah, yeah. With everyone's. Yeah, <laughs> yeah great, great. Hopefully. That's great. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for recording it. And uh, yeah, then, then I think it will uh, be uploaded on the, to the YouTube channel. Oh, great, great. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so, so then um, I would still say thank you very much for the for the questions, and also I would like to thank everyone for the. I really have to say uh, inspiration as well. Okay. Thanks for the presentation, and I think then uh, let's go back to the main room. Okay. Thank you very much, and I will stop my share, and um, I will go back then also. So, see you, everyone. Okay, see.